Welcome to our video series, Taking Control of Your Child's Diabetes. My name is Lisette. This video will review what to do during a diabetic emergency. There are two diabetic emergencies, severe hypoglycemia and diabetic ketoacidosis. What is severe hypoglycemia? It is when the blood sugar is so low that the brain does not have enough glucose to function adequately. Severe hypoglycemia will present with a blood sugar level below 70 in combination with the following conditions. Your child is unable to eat or drink, your child is unconscious, or your child is having a seizure. Every diabetic child reacts differently to blood sugar levels. One child may be awake and able to drink with a blood sugar level of 50, while a different child may be completely unconscious or is difficult to arouse. This is why severe hypoglycemia is defined not by a specific number of low blood sugar, but rather by how your child is behaving. So what should you do if your child has a low blood glucose emergency? First, it is important to check his or her blood sugar right away. If the blood sugar is low, below 70, but you can still wake your child, follow the steps outlined that we provided in the previous video of this series called hypoglycemia. If your child is not awake enough to follow simple commands such as drinking from a cup or straw, you will have to use the emergency glucagon injection. Glucagon is a medication that raises the blood sugar level usually within 10 to 20 minutes and will make your child wake up. Glucagon is a hormone that is normally made in the pancreas. It is extremely important not to put any food or drink in the mouth of a child who is unconscious or is having a seizure because he or she may choke. A few things to remember about your glucagon injection kit. Inside, you can find the steps that we demonstrated in illustrations. Also, remember to always check the expiration date on your glucagon kit and replace it before it expires. Lastly, never keep mixed glucagon, as it will not be effective. Now, we're going to demonstrate how to use your glucagon injection kit. Your glucagon injection comes in a red box. Inside your red box, you will see a syringe that's filled with sterile water. Next to it, you will also see a vial that has a dissolving white tablet inside. To use your injection kit, first you will place your vial on a flat surface. Next, remove your syringe from your red box and remove the cap that's covering the needle. Inject your vial with all of the water that comes inside of it. Then, remove your needle from your vial and roll the vial between your hands to mix the medication. Once your medication appears as if it was water and there are no visible white chunks, it is ready to be used. Place your vial back on a flat surface. Grab your syringe, expose the needle, and insert the needle into your vial. Flip your vial upside down to extract the medication. If your child weighs less than 44 pounds, pull the plunger back up to the first black line. If your child weighs more than 44 pounds, pull the plunger back to the second line, emptying the vial of its contents. Remove the vial from the needle, and now it is ready to be used. The glucagon injection should go in a muscle and it is widely recommended that it goes on the outer thigh. Since your child is already in a sideline position, it is also easiest. Pull down the clothing exposing the muscle and inject the glucagon at a 90 degree angle. Once the needle is completely into the muscle, inject all of its contents by pushing on the plunger. Then remove your needle and keep your child in a sideline position. 
Your child is expected to wake up between 10 to 20 minutes. Because the main side effect of glucagon does include vomiting, keep your child sidelined to avoid him or her choking. Your child should wake up within 15 minutes. As soon as your child is awake and is able to swallow, give them a fast-acting carbohydrate and light snack to keep the blood sugar up. Check the child's blood sugar more often for the next 24 hours. Call your child's doctor to notify him or her of the hypoglycemic event once your child is feeling better. It is extremely important to call 911 or your local emergency number if you are unable to give glucagon in a low blood glucose emergency, if you are unable to awaken your child within 15 minutes of giving glucagon, if your child is unable to eat within one hour after receiving glucagon, or if your child's seizure does not stop after five minutes. Now let's talk about the other diabetic emergency, diabetic ketoacidosis, also known as DKA. This occurs due to high blood sugars. It happens when ketones build up in the blood faster than the kidneys can get rid of them. It is a serious condition that requires immediate attention. The causes of DKA include not injecting enough insulin. For example, an error in carbohydrate counting at meals, applying the sliding scale, or an error in measuring insulin with a syringe or a malfunction of the insulin pump. DKA can also be caused by taking medications that increase blood sugar or by an illness or vomiting. The common signs and symptoms of DKA are nausea, vomiting, a fruity smelling breath, fast breathing, and a fast heartbeat. To treat DKA, you must give extra insulin for the high blood sugar. Maintain hydration with fluids by mouth or through an IV catheter and check urine for ketones. If your child has moderate to large ketones, have your child start drinking water and call your doctor. If your child is feeling sick with vomiting and is unable to tolerate anything by mouth, take your child to the nearest emergency room immediately because your child needs an IV and special IV fluids for hydration that will flush the ketones out of his or her system. Your child's blood sugar will also rise unusually high in this condition and he or she will need additional insulin in a hospital setting so that it can be controlled safely. Remember, if your child has a blood sugar greater than 250, check your child's urine for ketones using the urine dipsticks in order to catch early signs of DKA. Now you know about diabetic emergencies. Remember, we are here for your child and to support you. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact your diabetes team. Please continue watching this video series to learn more. Thank you for being an active member of your child's diabetes team.